Hi, I'm Andrew with Baker's Gas, and we're here today with the two machines that, uh, two, the red and blue machine here. So, what we got here is that we, I got a Malta Matic 215 by Miller, and then I got the Power Big 215 MP by Lincoln. So, uh, and I, I stand credit as a 215 MPI, so it's new inverter technology. So, in this video today, what we're going to do is a, a comparison video between the two. I'm just going to talk about the differences, I'm not going to weld with any of them. Um, we're just going to go over screens differences, output differences, uh, just visual aspects on units. And you can see there's a big difference between the two. But these are in the same running. Uh, they're, they're competition with each other. Um, one is clearly much bigger than the other. Uh, but I was just physically looking. But to jump right in, I mean, both are dimensionally close to the same. Lincoln's a little bit longer. But we're probably three inches taller on the you know, case-wise on the Lincoln, definitely taller on the handles, a little bit more rugged design on the Lincoln, whereas the Miller's more of a softer roll fit. But this one's 38 pounds, and this one is significantly heavier than 38 pounds. Um, but there again, same warranty, three-year warranty on both of them. Um, and, and I mean, they're, they're kind of, uh, they're competing in the same realm here. So I got the guns hooked up just to show you a visual on that, but let's get them both flipped on. Now this is what's different on these. You can notice door is on the left side of the Miller. Lincoln's door is on the right side. Power switch on the Miller's in the back. Flip that on first. And then power switch on the Lincoln is in the front. Just, just a little odd differences, but doesn't make one better than the other. Now you'll notice but this fan is running already on this Lincoln. This fan does not shut off on the Lincoln. It continually runs. Um, so, I mean, if you can get over that, it's, it's nothing. I guess it's not major, it just it's always running. Whereas this only runs fan on demand. Um, so I got them set up though, both of them on the same uh, setting. So this is ready, set, weld. Uh, so, and then Miller has the auto set feature, right? So this one, you just tell it, what size wire well, we can we can we can go through it. So tell the thickness. Then let's just see. So we want to do MIG steel C25. So we can do C25, C100, which is pure 100% CO2, manual CV, which has nothing to do with ready set weld. It's just you set the wire feed and voltage. Uh, flux core self shielded. We can attach a spool gun. We can stick weld with this, and we can TIG weld with this. Um, so basically all the same functions. Nice screen on this one though, gives you a, a clear like, okay, I'm TIG welding. Well, this one here is a little bit different. We're, we're toggling down with a, with a button here and we're telling it we want flux core, big stainless, C25, so 7525, 100% CO2, make aluminum with a spool gun attachment, uh, lift arc remote so we can put a foot pedal on this TIG torch, um, and then we have lift arc only and then stick output. This one you can put a foot pedal on as well. I'll go over the difference here in that in just a second. But we'll pick we'll pick our MIG C25. Tells us what polarity we need to set up. What MIG gun. So we're just press to continue. Yep, gas connection, we're good. We're 75, 25, we're good. We're gonna tell 030. Then we're gonna tell it 10 gauge. Where is on the Miller here, we're, we're gonna tell it 10 gauge, but we go 22 gauge up to 10 gauge. So 10 gauge is the closest to eighth inch because Miller now gives us fractions on this to tell us, and we'll flip over to here, we'll, and I'll show you this welds up to 3 eighths material. This one goes up to 10 gauge, but I'm only plugged in 110 volt on the Lincoln. So this one's plugged into 220. So we're gonna get a little bit more output on there, but we're gonna eighth inch, and this goes all the way down to 24 gauge for auto set settings. Um, and then we just tell it the wire size, same thing as this. A little bit different though, you know, you can see the difference between the two. And then our auto set feature, we can turn it off and then we're in manual mode. We just adjust our, our parameters the same. We can go right back to auto set. Whereas this one, we got to get out of that, go to manual CV, press continue, then I can change my bolts and wire feed speed. So a little bit different. This one, to get into auto sets a little bit easier, this one you got to get into a little bit more setup. But it's not, not necessarily a bad thing. I'm going to explain the differences between the two. Um, one big difference, MIG guns that come with them. Uh, Miller's MIG gun um, is, is narrower. So we can, we can show the difference. It's narrower. 
got a little bit bigger grip on the Lincoln. Uh, a little bit feels a little bit fills out your hand a little bit better. This one a little bit narrower. So I mean, I, I don't have really a preference on either one. I kind of I like them both. This one's got some grip grips on it. Feels good. Um, same basic gooseneck design though, same angle. And then obviously these are the new MDX consumables. Thread on nozzle on the Miller and thread on nozzle on the Lincoln. Um, you know, very, very similar. And as far as like amperage output and uh, this is just a 175L and this is an MDX 100. So you get a little bit more amperage on the Lincoln gun. Um, Cause this is only, you know, an MDX 100, so a 100 amp mid gun on that. Um, and then obviously you get 175 amp on the Lincoln. So it's a little bit heavier duty gun. Um, you can see I mean, the clear differences in them. Um, and then on another note, we'll slide them off to the side here. I'll show you guys internally. Flip this one around. So flip open the door. Oh, we got our manual here. We'll flip that out back. And we got our, so similar on the inside as far as our setup for our spool of wire, spool of wire. We can take this off and put a two pound spool on that as well. But where the big difference comes into play is the power blocks. And that's what I wanna point out. The Lincoln's power block is very, very robust. Cast aluminum, um, and if you're familiar with Lincoln on anything Lincoln, this is standard on industrial equipment. So they just now transitioned it to their commercial equipment as far as like the home hobby guys uh, or the smaller equipment um, but this is the wire guy now some people think this is annoying but actually it's a pretty nice design so what it's doing is it's pushing that wire keeping it flush against so limiting or cutting back on bird nesting um, obviously flip that up you got your idler wheel your drive roll but we do have to change the drive rolls if we want to change wire diameter whereas miller we just push in and we basically flip that up just push in and it changes our drive roll, our wheels. So that's a nice feature. We don't have to fumble around with an extra wheel to change out, but if you've ever bird nested anything, this feature right here is actually very, very nice. Keeping that wire in line. And it's impressive that they added it on these um, the commercial grade equipment for home users, but very nice. I, I, I like that feature about this a lot. Um, some people, I've gotten some negative feedback on it. Yeah, it is kind of a pain to undo and do it, but it, believe me, it cuts back on that bird nesting. Where's the Miller? Put down ready to rock and roll. Another big difference is, so you notice our big gun wire, or trigger wire, plugs in on the Miller on the inside. So it kind of cleans it up, keeps it all inside, internal, so it plugs in right there, and then we have our uh, remote foot pedal control plug in right there which is just a old phone jack. Not my favorite thing in the world. Not really my favorite thing that that plugs inside either, but it does keep it nice and neat, cleaned up. Um, but on the Lincoln, we put everything right out on the front. So we put our, our trigger wire right on the front, and then we have an industrial, I'll unplug this, Amphenol connection for our remote, for our t foot pedal, and for our spool gun. So. Very nice, I, I, I really like that Amphenol connection. Some people say those are big, they're cumbersome, but you know what, they work and they hold up. And I just, there's not much that goes wrong with these things as far as that connection goes. And, and I just wanna point out that this is heavy duty comparatively to the old foam jack style. And I'm not knocking either one of them, but I'm just saying that I, I do like this connection much better. Um, so just give me a, down on the inside there we'll flip that down um, and then I, as you can see too well before you that we have a parameter guide we have a parameter guide here so similar in that they we kind of give it a good you know volts amps wire feed speed on both of them similar setups what I do like about Lincoln is they give you all the part numbers right on the inside so if you ever lose any of those stuff you can just look on the inside of this this one does too when it's in a manual comes with the machine and sometimes you lose that stuff so pretty nice that it's all laid out there um, all in all side by side the machines are pretty you know they're, they're 
drastically different in my eyes. Um, and, and they do well. Uh, both of them do really well in the field as far as like, um, they're very popular, both of them are. Um, and there's not very much content out there. I'm putting the two side by side. Another thing I want to point out though too is the Stinger or the Stick, Elect stick Electrode Holder. Um, this is a Miller with a 25 millimeter DINs, right? Small DINs connection for the front of that. Um, but good, very good spring on that. Holds a stick electrode really well. Um, and obviously a smaller cable. I think that's, yeah, that's four gauge. 25 millimeter. This one, we bump up. Same thing, four gauge, but we got 50 millimeter DINs. That's a nice, that's a standard connection on a lot of welding equipment. Um, which to me, you know, what, what would you put? Put them side by side, what would give you more output? You know, what would hold up longer, this guy or this guy? I'm gonna go with the 50 millimeter dens, just because we can push a lot more heat uh, through that connection than we can with that connection. Now, I'm not saying that you, these things, they, they're out there, they weld. Um, but this is just a little bit heavier duty. Then the stick electrode holder, your typical Lincoln Stinger, good spring, holds the things pretty well. I mean. Nothing that you can buy consumables for it, same as the Miller too. Um, just to give you a good comparison on that. So a lot of these people that buy these machines are, are, are they're in the market for MIG and stick is what we're seeing. But then we had TIG, and you can buy a TIG kit for them. So, but like I said, the market that these machines are in, a lot of the people are they're either stick welding on a farm or in the shop, and then they want to do a little bit of MIG weld as well. Um, so I just want to give you a good comparison of the two. All in all, I mean, I think they're both very nice machines and you can clearly see the differences on them. Price-wise, the Lincoln is priced more competitively than the Miller, and we'll link all that information down below. Uh, so it's up to you guys to decide which one. I just want to lay out the clear differences between them. Uh, if you've got any questions, comments, please leave them down below. We'll do our best to answer them. And stay tuned, and thanks again for watching.